All right, homies, in this video, I'm gonna share with you three mega tips to learn code and get a remote developer job. These are not just some regular tips that any influencer will give you, but these are three mega tips. And I collected these mega tips from my experience of teaching myself code, music, drawing, painting, sculpting, law, whatever, and from my experience of teaching others the same skills, only coding actually, and help them get remote developer jobs and I also saw beginners doing the opposite of these three tips and failing completely miserably and I don't want you to be one of them okay so if you want to become a remote developer you want to make six figures or more you need to adhere to these three tips actually I would call them basic principles of life okay so let's get into it the first tip is the loop mastery and I want to illustrate the loop mastery through the perfect breakfast analogy. So me personally, I really love a bacon and egg toast. Okay, so I have created over three months the best recipe to do that. I put my toast in the toaster, I press the button, then I set up my pan at level 8 on my stove, I wait one minute, then I put the bacon, I let the bacon simmer for three minutes, then I crack the eggs, then I lower the temperature to number seven, I wait two minutes, then I flip it. So in this time, the bacon has all the fat out, the egg is melted with bacon pieces inside, and then when I flip it, I'm gonna make sure that I'm not gonna crack the inside of the egg because I really love the yolk to be runny, but I don't like the white stuff to be, you know, gummy. So I flip it, I wait two, three minutes. At the same time, the toast comes out. I put the egg on the toast, then I smear the bread to collect all the fat that's left over from the bacon. And then, just then, I start eating. Point is, that it took me two to three months to come up with this perfect breakfast. I don't do it right now because I'm on a diet, but when I'm gonna start bulking, I'm gonna guarantee you I'm gonna do that, okay? The point is that it took me months to perfect this. I've tried every single way of cooking my bacon, of cooking my eggs, until I came up with this perfect strategy. And the reason why I'm telling you this is not to make you hungry, but to make you understand that programming has some ingredients okay you have your fundamentals like functions loops if else statements variables objects arrays strings numbers primitive data types uh, non-primitive data types you need to understand it deeply okay a noob would just look at the concept one second and think it knows it and then it tries to do something with it it doesn't work and then it gives up well that's because it didn't take time to break the thing to rewrite it in your own way i honestly see this with very advanced students of mine that come in or people that are doing let's say react or redux okay they are doing react and redux if you don't know what that is there are some more advanced technologies and one of the first tests to make sure that they are actually really good is to do the array methods exercise that I shared with you last week, okay? And they completely fail. Like, you would think like, oh, this guy is doing a Redux and React, he should be really good. No, they are actually really bad. I feel bad for them because they thought they are so good and then they realize like how shit they are, you know? And it kind of sucks, you know, it's a, an ego hit. And that's because they are using tools like ChatGPT, okay, too much and ChatGPT codes for them. If you do not manage to understand your tools, your concepts, then you'll never be able to be productive with those concepts. You, you'll never be able to be creative with those concepts and nobody will want you. Please, 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 for your own sake, try to always understand every single thing that you are currently learning. Don't just take it from granted. Break it down into multiple pieces and try to make your own mental model of what that thing is. Next thing is to finish what you start. You wouldn't believe how many people I've seen starting projects and never finishing those projects. And I'm like, why? And this is a character, character trait of a noob, of a beginner. Someone who starts things, never finishes. Probably you saw that meme with, oh, this is my third project this month or this is my 50th project this month ha 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 and all programmers are laughing because they are all doing that while they're getting paid 300k a year 
but you are not there yet. They have the luxury to f around their time and to learn new things and to start and dump projects on GitHub for no reason, just because they wanna, you know, play around, they were bored and whatnot. They have that luxury. They are getting paid 300K a year. They can do whatever the f they want, but you, you are getting paid five, six times less than them. Well, you cannot afford to start projects and never finish them. Why? Because you'll always start, get your project to a level after a week or two, then it gets difficult because you need to start taking care of a bunch of things, like projects grow exponentially, right? And then you stop and then you start a project and you stop again. And that's where people are stuck in a loop forever and never and never. And they start complaining, oh, I'm not getting jobs. Nobody's replying to me. Nobody's giving me an interview. They are stuck <laughs> on a treadmill. It's the guy that goes to the gym for one year and he looks exactly the same. They are doing the same projects. They never progress. That project that people are letting down, that's the project that would have given them that first job. But they are always quitting. And I know it's difficult because I work with people and we are working on a project for four months now. And I'm so lucky that people are still with these projects after four months. If you try this by yourself with, with other two, three bodies, after three weeks, you'll see that, oh, they're not joining the meetings, oh, they're not doing that, oh, they follow another roadmap, oh, they do this, that, that, and they end up a square zero again. And you end up a square zero again. So finish what you start. Then next thing, I don't know the details. If you don't know this saying that the devil is in the details, I have no idea on what planet you are. Like the difference between a noob and a professional is how they handle the details. Yeah, of course, the big level architectural stuff matters, but the level of details is also extremely important because if you take care of the details from a software engineering side, you will uh, create good habits, okay? For example, I see a lot of beginners, when they start with me, they don't take care of their indentation or their variable names are wrong or their class names are wrong or they have too many class names or too little class names. They have public toilet code, okay? And it takes maybe two, three weeks to fix that. But I've seen it with complete noobs and with people that have one year of experience. And if you do not take care of these small details from the engineering side of you, point of view, from the engineering point of view, then in an interview, you'll start making those mistakes and the software engineer who is always paying attention to those little quirks and mistakes, will red flag you straight away. Or before you even get an interview, someone looks at your GitHub repo and sees, you know, some weird variable names. Sometimes you are using single quotes, not double quotes. Sometimes you are putting your absolute imports to the bottom and their relative at the top and so, and the other way around in some other parts. You don't have a clear structure of your projects. Your projects are too simple. You'll start to add a bunch of red flags and that's it. No matter how funny or charismatic you might be, if you're on Tinder, let's say, and you have five great pictures, and then the sixth one is you puking at the college party, you will be judged based on the worst picture that you have, not based on the other ones, right? And then you wanna limit the amount of red flags you give because you'll always have red flags. This is normal, you are a human being. You limit those by ironing out the details. And then from a product perspective, from your how your project looks in front of a recruiter who, or hiring manager that are non-technical, they will not, check those single codes versus double codes, all those rules, they will not check that. Making sure that your project is addictive, you know, like you have smooth animations, you're not abusing everything. Because I see beginners, they have a portfolio and they put all their effort into that portfolio that, and no effort into their projects. That's another story for another time. And then I scroll down and then this image comes like that. This image comes like that. There's like an attack. I feel like in, in Star Wars when I on their website and then I look at the professional, very smooth animations. You don't even see them, but it, they create an experience. And I understand you are not there yet, but nobody gives a f that you are not there yet. That's what you don't understand. Nobody has pity or mercy for you. They want you to get paid to solve their problem right away. 
okay? They don't want to train you or something like that. That's like 2015 mentality. Right now, you need to be able to come in and get the job done, okay? And you need coaching for that. When I go into the gym, my coach, it's adjusting my form every single time to get more out of each workout because there are guys that go to the gym and they look exactly the same every single week and then after one month they look the same same after another one and so on and so forth you don't want to be there that's why you need coaching and if you want coaching if you want a roadmap guidance live calls q a's feedback whenever you get stuck you can ask a question whatever problem you might have exact projects that you need to build at what level an assessment okay because you might think that you might be like this great developer but you are already like terrible but you don't even know about it or if you're a complete beginner and you don't you want to avoid all the bullshit trying to figure out which one is the best roadmap out of all these 500 ones then apply for coaching check out the first link in the description watch the testimonials and see what they say most of the time they will say stuff like they've been stuck in tutorial hell They've tried everything and they also say don't waste any more time because time is passing, you're not going to get it back and that's pretty much it. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.